Do you feel uncertain or confused about how AI will impact the workplace? Hi, I'm Kelly Malone for Connection. You're not alone if you're wondering how to capitalize on this fast emerging technology. Finding the right devices and services remains elusive for many. Today, I'm joined by Connection's Apple experts, Regan Clark and Adrian Karen. Thank you so much for joining me. And in this video, we're going to address how Mac is the best platform for AI and how Apple is leading the charge. Okay, so Reagan, let's start with you. Why AI and why now? Yeah, artificial intelligence or AI is such a hot topic right now in the industry, but it's important to define what artificial intelligence is. It's the simulation of human intelligence by computers to learn, reason, and problem solve that's why everybody's excited. It can be used across a vast array of industries, whether you're summarizing a document, it can even write code for you. Adoption is increasing rapidly. 60% of AI capable PCs are forecasted to be shipped to businesses by 2027. Okay, so how many AI capable devices are shipping today? Yeah, that's a staggering fact. Only 19% shipped in 2024 that are truly AI capable. That's a relatively small percentage, creating a huge bottleneck. 100%, however, of Apple devices are fully AI capable, some since 2017. A study by Canalys shows that users prefer interacting with AI models using local data across multiple devices. So you can go from your Mac to your iPad to your iPhone and still be using AI without being anchored to a cloud to do that processing for you. And this is where Apple devices really shine today. So Adrian, you have a long history of being with Connection and Apple. It's been about 18 years now. Um, so Reagan just mentioned that some devices have been AI ready since 2017. So how is that? Because it seems like the trend is relatively new. Yeah, Apple's been doing it uh, for a long time and it started with Apple Silicon. So in our iPhone in 2017, the neural engine was introduced. So the Mac in 2020 got Apple Silicon. And Apple Silicon is truly where those AI capabilities uh, are housed because it's built into the silicon. And that optimizes the performance by that neural engine as well as the graphics processing unit. And because it's all built in, there's incredible speed and performance and efficiencies. Apple is helping its users embrace AI today. So who is currently embracing AI as an emerging technology? And why and how can businesses, schools, or other organizations follow suit? Yeah, so there's different types of AI users right now. There's organizations that are using the technology, uh, just like ChatGPT. They use Macs internally because, to Adrian's point, that silicon has all of that technology built right into the chipset. Apple also focuses on developer outreach. So what does this mean? So core ML framework and ML compute framework to integrated AI capabilities into apps make it just that much more efficient. So if you look at tools like Microsoft Office or Excel, there's AI tools built in that can run analysis for you. And that's being done right on the local Apple Silicon. You don't have to wait until the cloud comes back and gives you an answer. Yes, Apple is actively addressing those obstacles for AI adoption. And this is done through that developer support and the hardware integration. It's highly functional and very user friendly. Apple's vertical integration approach, the interoperability across the Apple device ecosystem, as well as the on-device AI applications. These are all advantages of handling multimodal AI applications. What industries might be slower to adopt AI? Yeah, there are some public sector industries whether it's state and local government or higher ed, where they may be a little bit hesitant to adopt technologies, but there's a challenge with that. Well, first let's start with the users. The users wanna know, can I use this today? And if they're not being supported with those devices, then they're already a step behind. Then you have certain schools within uh, the university that might be doing some of these AI models. We wanna give them the tools now so that they can start using the Apple's core features to write that code. So again, while it might be an approach to slow down, you really need to look at the landscape moving forward, the roadmap is how is this gonna affect the everyday user? And am I gonna be where I wanna be in six, 12, 18 months from now? We have time for one more topic, Adrian and Reagan, give me short-term and long-term perspective on Apple and AI. When it comes to Apple and AI, we're talking about built-in capabilities that are there today 
built into Apple Silicon. And this is how we enrich the user experience across Apple's entire product line. It improves productivity as well as increasing accessibility. I love that. Apple's utilization of AI creates easier manageability and compatibility within existing IT ecosystems. This creates happier users, lower costs, and less support time. Who doesn't like that? I can't wait to see how all of this evolves as AI becomes more embraced in the workplace. Thank you so much for joining me, Adrian and Reagan. It was great to have this discussion with you. Hey, thank you for watching. If your organization would like more information on Mac in the workplace, visit connection.com slash Apple.